What about your fear of coronavirus, perhaps, and coronavirus complications? What if there's tools you could use that would substantially reduce your risk of getting serious coronavirus infection? Because getting coronavirus infection, to some degree, is probably pretty commonplace. The interesting thing is 50 or 60% of people who get coronavirus appear not to get any symptoms at all. And of the people that get symptoms, the vast majority get mild symptoms. So how, what can you do to make it so that your symptom, so your exposure to coronavirus leads to a mild disease or no apparent disease, not bad disease? Because for many of us, we know people who have had bad complications of coronavirus or even death. And you don't fall into, fall into that group. I'm Miles Hassel. I'm an internist in private practice at St. Vincent Hospital in Portland, Oregon. And we like to talk a lot about how to improve your own immunity, how to put more medicine in your hands. So many people get uh, vaccination appropriately. Many people choose not to get vaccination. Whether you're vaccinated or not, you could still get coronavirus. We know that, although the vaccination does seem to reduce the risk. Many people can't get vaccination for a variety of medical reasons, and so we're, we're, we're cognizant of that and, and sensitive to those people. Regardless of the vaccination status, there are things that you can do. And so think of those things that are contribute to coronavirus risk. The majority are obesity-related diseases and things that we can't change like age. But even with the aging, our healthy aging population in our practice, people who might be as late as 95 years old, who are fit and slim and eat well, so far in our practice do not seem to get serious infection. I'm sure there's exceptions that, that, uh, that are found. But if you want to increase your odds, take good care of yourself. And so taking good care of yourself in terms of respiratory virus infections, immunity and inflammation in general involves the following. Regular exercise, eating an excellent diet of which the Mediterranean diet has the best evidence for in terms of being an anti-inflammatory diet. Getting uh, a good spectrum of bugs in your gut, what we call a healthy microbiome. And in our practice, we encourage people to have yogurt, kefir, fresh sauerkraut, kimchi, maybe kombucha, as long as it's low in sugar. Uh, these are all things that contribute to a healthy microbiome, along with all whole foods, because all whole foods in their kind of way is they're all kind of dirty. And that dirt brings, brings bugs, and mostly, most of the time it's good bugs. Um, heat is an interesting one. Uh, things like a uh, deep hot bath or a sauna one or two or three times a week. Uh, it's probably a really good idea to improve your immune system as well. There's certain things to avoid, especially highly processed foods, so make most of your food at home, and foods with a lot of refined grains or sugars. So if you're going to eat a grain food, make it something you cook at home out of whole grains. The role of exercise is critical. Uh, the, um, so typically we'd recommend exercise two or even three times a day. Make exercise just sort of a habit that you get into. If it's not 30 minutes, it could be 30 seconds. Just something to make you short of breath and sweaty several times a day. And by not making the duration of your exercise too onerous, a lot of people are able to pick up their exercise in ways where they just fit it in here and there, and they feel a lot better for it. Sunlight is an interesting one too. So we live in an area that's chronically dark because of heavy cloud cover. But when it is sunny, get out there. If you're somebody who can do cross-country skiing or snowshoeing or something like that during the, during the winter months, that's a bonus. Uh, uh, behind all this also is the idea of getting your weight under control. Because the weight drives risk factors for COVID-19 such as high blood pressure, diabetes, kidney failure, and these all contribute to a huge degree to your risk from coronavirus. So get that waistline under control. And we have a number of tools that can help. Obviously, we run a private practice so we can see uh, patients for this. We also have a book that provides all this information on how to, how to uh, um, reduce your waste in ways that are, that, uh, that are healthy uh, and practical and sustainable over the long term. We have free handouts on our website, which is called Good Food, Great Medicine. So. Don't allow yourself just to be afraid of COVID-19. Turn that fear into action. Whether or not you're vaccinated, you could still be at risk. Take action to make your immune system so robust that that risk is much less. Thank you.